Quantum computing. The mystery, the excitement, the fantasies of answering the universe's oldest questions. If you saw our video on quantum computing last year, you know all about these fantasies. But as with all cutting-edge technologies, a lot has changed and new developments have been made that could truly make quantum computing accessible to everyday people like you and I. The holy grail of these developments is modular quantum computing, and we're going to talk about all the implications of this earth-shaking disruption to quantum computing on this episode of Super Freaky Science. Quantum computing has been one of the most groundbreaking new technologies to pop up over the last few decades, and its proposed utilisation have scientists and tech leaders brimming with excitement about the possibilities that could be. From paving the way to higher artificial intelligence to unlocking the mysteries of quantum mechanics, quantum computers have the potential to radically disrupt our understanding of the universe. But as you may have guessed, there are still some serious technical hurdles to overcome before quantum computers are ready to roll. After all, working with quantum elements is such a new and freakily strange job that scientists are still getting used to how things work on the quantum level. But this technology is constantly evolving and new strides happen on the daily. As such, there's a new method of quantum computing known as modular quantum computing that could totally change the game and unlock the power of quantum computing. The Quantum Processor To understand modular quantum computing, we need to understand the problem it solves. And to understand the problem, we need a little background on the Quantum Processing Unit, or QPU. Does that sound like something from Star Trek? Ok, let's break it down. We've all heard of a CPU. That's the processor for a good old-fashioned classic computer. Like the phone or laptop that you're watching this really amazing super freaky science video on. Well, quantum computers have an equivalent to that processor. It's called a QPU instead of CPU. And instead of processing classical binary data like a regular computer, a QPU processes quantum data or qubits. The noise problem The problem that researchers are having with quantum processors is the problem of quantum noise. When scientists have tried to create larger quantum processors, the processor itself is creating too much quantum noise. Since these processors are operating on such an infinitesimally small level, any amount of noise can cause a huge interference in the internal workings of the processor. So the quantum processor basically only works right if they are small enough. Scientists aren't able to make a processor big enough to do what we need them to do because of the noise problem. To make this into a metaphor, think of the quantum processor as a team of super tiny rowboats in a small pool. The more rowboats you add, the more rowing that is happening in the pool. Since the very act of rowing is creating small waves in the pool, the more rowing that is happening, the bigger the waves from the rowing becomes, causing our poor tiny little rowboats to capsize. It truly becomes a perfect storm. Except, unlike the 2000 George Clooney flick, a bunch of people don't die at the end. Anyway, let's see how the brilliant minds behind quantum computers are solving this problem. Modular Quantum Computing So how can this problem of noise be solved? How can scientists prevent the metaphorical waves from capsizing our metaphorical boats? It turns out the answer is the same answer to most emotional problems. Compartmentalization. Just kidding, that isn't a long-term solution to emotional health. However, it does look like it's helping the world of quantum computing. Let's explore this idea. By making quantum computing modular, researchers think it can solve the noise problem. Instead of creating one big processor, we create several small ones and network them together so that they can share processing workload from afar. 
To return to our metaphor, instead of having a bunch of rowboats in one big pool, we create a bunch of smaller pools with a limited number of rowboats in each one. That way our rowboats are paddling away, they won't create too many waves that cause them to capsize themselves. With a bunch of smaller pools, we can have the same number of rowboats without any worry of waves building up. If only that were the case for George Clooney and Mark Wahlberg. Sorry fellas, rest in peace. Networking Quantum Computers Believe it or not, connecting multiple processes together to perform complex computing isn't actually a very new idea. In fact, supercomputers have been using this technique since the beginning of supercomputers. For example, IBM's Summit supercomputer is the size of two tennis courts, with 9,216 processors working together. So what exactly makes the modular approach different from other supercomputers? One word, entanglement. Since quantum computers run on the quantum level, qubits have the ability to become entangled with each other. When two qubits are entangled, whatever happens to one will automatically result in the same action in the other. And once qubits are entangled, that's it. There's no untangling them. Kind of like those earphones I left in my pants pocket. <sighs> quantum computer fantasies this modular breakthrough gets quantum computing one step closer to the all-incredible hopes and aspirations that science nerds and tech freaks alike dream on the daily. Hopes and aspirations like the unbreakable encryption that would secure the internet in a way like never before. A quantum processor's ability to create impossibly complex encryptions could make your transactions and identity thousands of times more secure than it is today. Imagine a world where online security is unbreakable. Not bad, right? Internet security is great and all, but what about solving the mysteries of the universe? That's exactly what researchers hope to achieve with a quantum processor powerful enough and that could be possible with modular quantum computing. As it turns out, simulating things on the quantum level is impossibly hard on a classical computer. But scientists think quantum computers could make quantum simulations possible. This could enable researchers to simulate things like the Big Bang in a way that's never been done before. That's all we have for this episode. Don't forget to like and tap the subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching.